Hello, I'm Harry Edwards with Apologetics.com and I'd like to pass along information on an amazing opportunity for those of you who are passionate about defending the truth claims of Christianity or have a desire to become better equipped in the art and science of apologetics or are just curious to know what apologetics is all about. A few months ago, our team here at Apologetics.com led sessions and helped sponsor the annual Apologetics Canada Conference. We've got the video of the entire conference now available on DVD. The entire conference, which includes the main talks by William Lane Craig, Andy Bannister, Jay Warner Wallace, and many more. The breakout sessions, slides, notes, and other exclusive thinking series videos by Andy Steiger are all included in this one DVD. This is a whole conference in one DVD, and we have it available now. We have a special deal going on right now. Follow the link at the bottom of this video to get more information. I've cut a few segments of the, of the main plenary sessions to give you a sense of what we are offering in this one conference DVD. Hope you like it, and I'd like to show it to you right now. But the question is this, where does hope come from? Where is hope grounded? I want to suggest to you, we'll come back to that slide in a minute, actually, that shows how organized I am. Um, I want to suggest to you that hope is all about which story you are living in. Now, when we stupidly on this continent got rid of the Bible from the education system, we didn't realize what we were doing. This was just stupid educationalists who don't understand what they're doing, sadly. I don't think that's rude. I think it's true. Um, I hold them responsible for the destruction of the university to a large degree. The Brits kept it because they said you can't understand yourself if you don't know the book that made you. Every major culture has a major book as it, at its heart. The biggest religion in the world over time is animistic paganism. There, the book is the book of nature. That ends up with animal stories which produce con men, hence all those emails from Nigeria. Uh, <laughs> If you inhabit the Old Testament, you will, you will grow up as a cultural Jew with Jewish ethics. The Bible, uh, Christian with Christian ethics. The Quran, the Veda, and so on. And sadly, with television, a North American with North American ethics. There is no such thing as an objection or a challenge that you or I will face that has not already been faced by someone somewhere in the Christian community and probably responded to by someone as well. I find that very, very encouraging because none of us can do it all. But we don't have to do it all. That's the beauty of the Christian community. It is huge, it is rich, it is deep, it contains many, many scholars, many thinkers who have wrestled with huge, a huge number of issues and challenges to faith. So you are not alone and neither am I alone. There's always help available somewhere in the Christian community, regardless of the issue someone raises to you. Maybe someone will come to you and say, I find all these contradictions in the Bible. Look at this one here in the Synoptic Gospels. I see Matthew said it one way and then Luke said it a different way. How can that be? I thought this was supposed to be the Word of God. Is there an answer to that? I get a lot of emails like this because people come to find out in this church they use the ESV. The ESV is very good about footnoting the scribal changes, the, the variants, the textual variants that we see in the manuscript over the years. But maybe you're not even aware of it. And for a lot of us as Christians, we weren't aware of it until people started writing popular level books like this book, Jesus Interrupted by Bart Ehrman. This book shook a lot of people who were Christians their entire life because they weren't aware of the presence of some of these textual variants. And their first contact was Bart, who basically showed them these things in this book. Well, I think it's because of that sense that life has to be about so much more that many in our culture are looking for answers in spirituality. Organized religion may be on the decline, but spirituality is everywhere. A recent survey uh, discovered that 65% of Canadians and 72% of British Columbians, incidentally enough, describe themselves as spiritual. They may not be into organized religion, but they are certainly not atheists. They are describing themselves in surveys as spiritual. Many people are turning to spirituality, uh, in inverted commas, in order to try and find meaning, to find hope, to find direction in our culture. To give you a few examples, Islam, which I'll be talking about later today, is on the rise here uh, in Canada. The number of Muslims here in Canada is predicted to rise from 2.5% today to about 7.5% in 2031. Islam is growing rapidly. Many people are looking to 
to those to a religion like Islam for answers. Alternatively, we could talk about new spiritualities that are popping up everywhere, somewhat like mushrooms after a rainstorm. And you don't learn anything from television. Even the so-called educational programs are not educational. They're, they're, they're entertainment. If you really want to know something about biology, you have to go and do some reading and some writing. Not enough writing now either. So I didn't have that de deficit, neither did my children, because fortunately they grew up in Jamaica largely. When we came to Canada, I said to them, the televisions here have so many channels, none of which are worth watching, but what do you want to do? And bless them, they said, in Jamaica, we played lots of games and we talked a lot. That's better. We'll do that. So we never had television. The loneliest moment in the world is when you discover that everything you've placed your hope in is actually empty and has let you down. Now, in the light of that, many people have simply become cynical. Many people have simply become cynical. Trust nothing. Trust nobody is a, is a big idea in our age. Dismiss religion. Dismiss authority. Dismiss politics. Trust nobody. Let nobody in. If you let nobody into your world, of course, you cannot be hurt. And uh, you can be safe and secure. Or so the idea goes. But the problem is this. Cynicism and, and doubt are universal acids. And they corrode everything. When we really knew our Bibles, we spoke more richly to one another than we realized because we were infected by the Bible. So that even if we did not become Christian in the belief sense, we would be culturally Christian. And that is immensely valuable. All of the traditional arguments for God's existence, such as the cosmological, teleological, moral, and ontological arguments, not to mention creative new arguments find intelligent and articulate defenders in the contemporary philosophical scene. But what you might ask uh, about the new atheists uh, exemplified by Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, and Sam Harris, doesn't this movement herald a reversal of this trend? Well, not really. As is evident from the authors that it interacts with, or rather fails to interact with, the new atheism is actually a pop cultural phenomenon, lacking in intellectual muscle and blissfully ignorant of the revolution that has transpired in Anglo-American philosophy. It tends to reflect the scientism of a bygone generation rather than the contemporary intellectual scene. As a professional philosopher, I believe that the existence of God explains a vast array of the data of human experience. And this evening, I would like to mention briefly eight such data.